do Tough Love um, Co-Ed Season 5, Episode 8. It starts off with Soraya and Christopher C. They're, I think, in the kitchen. They were talking about a love letter that she had wrote him, I guess, after group. So, we'll talk about that later. So, whatever. Um, then, you see the guys outside. They're looking over the little banister. And they're trying to see what was going to be going on. Because, I guess, they see the crew setting up for a party. So, then everybody's trying to wonder what's going on. They're kind of nervous because nobody knows what's going on or whatever. So, then... So, Raya's ex-boyfriend, Elgin, comes up. Um, we find out they have dated um, two years on and off. He's cute. I'll give her that. He's cute. Um, but he cheated on her. So, he ain't that damn cute no more. Anyway, um, Chris's college um, crush, Jesse, comes. Um, Kyle's ex-boyfriend, Brady, comes. We didn't really too much see him, but... He comes, she talks about, she tells him about Rusty and how she talked too much or whatever. So then they show Soraya and Elgin talking and they're talking about, you know, is he dating anybody? Um, he was like, no. And he was like, do you believe me? And she was like, no. He was like, well, why did you ask him? She was like, I just want to see if he was going to tell the truth. So apparently she don't trust his ass. And I, when I see him, I look at... I see him and say, oh, he's a player, whatever. We'll get into that. So, anyway, um, Stu's ex-girlfriend, Roxy, comes. She doesn't want no part of um, Stu. We don't know what the hell he did to her, but she says that she's moved on. She's in another relationship, so she's moved on. My thing is, you came all the way from Chicago to, I think they're in California, but wherever the hell they at. Um, you come all the way from Chicago to where they at and to decide you don't want to be there. Bitch, it wasn't for a free trip because I'm quite sure they sent your ass right back home since you didn't get him no airtime. But we never get to figure out what he did to her or nothing like that. She didn't want to talk to him. Steve was like, well, can I go ask him, do he have anything to say to you or whatever? And she's like, okay. So Steve goes to Stu to see what's going on. Stu don't know what the hell was wrong with her, what he did to her. But he said he apologized. You know, they were, I guess, in college or whatever, and he wasn't faithful to her, and I guess she was in love with him. So, like I said, we didn't get no answer. We didn't get answer from that, but she was hurt. Um, Amanda shows up because Steve wanted to see how would Christopher react to having Jesse and Amanda there. Typical stool. Once he saw Amanda, he kind of brushes Jesse off and go to kick it with her. You can tell Jesse got got jealous or whatever, cause she walks off. So then they show Darius shows up for Judy. Um, they're talking about her cousin. I mean his cousin situation from the last episode. He kind of clears things up. They kind of cool. So then they show Sal. He shows up for um Portia. He shows up for Portia or whatever, and this is like their fourth date. So, everybody thinking they're going to be cool because, you know, Portia don't usually, her dates don't usually last. So, for her, you know, to be the fourth date, okay, whatever. So, then Soraya and Elgin are sitting there talking. And he basically telling her how he want to start over, he wants to be with her. And I'm sitting there like, please, no. You can tell, No. You can tell he's not going to be faithful. I don't give a damn if y'all started over. And if he cheated on you more than once, I'm quite sure, he's going to cheat on you again. Um, Monica comes out because they can see that she's falling right back into his trap. Monica asks her what's going on. She's like, well, I'm seeing to see where things can go. Monica like, no, this is supposed to be a, a chapter you're supposed to be closing. And that's what I was thinking too. Like, no, this is where you were supposed to get your closure so you could let him know, like, he hurt you. But... This is what you don't want to deal with. Because that's what she told him. She was He was asking her, well, did, did she come there and find what she was looking for? And she was like, no, I haven't found what I'm looking for. But I don't know what I don't want. And if you don't, if you know you don't want to be cheated on, Soraya, please don't go back to him. Because he's going to screw. He probably screwed somebody as soon as he left there with you and said, okay, well, I'll be faithful when she come back. I'm just saying. I just felt like. That that relationship is over. It's sale is it's gone. So 
anyway, after that happened, um, they all still mingling and partying. Well, what they consider a party because she wasn't no music going. What about dancing? Um, Portia and her date sitting there talking and then they talking about working out or whatever. And he brings up that because she was asking him, do he work out in the park or run in the park? And he was like, I'm too tall to run in the park. Everybody was on Portia about this date, but this is the first time that I was kind of on her side. So I don't know if VH1 fucked up some editing that we didn't get to see. But it seemed like he was kind of on the defense too because she wasn't. Um, she was asking him about him working out in the park, and I guess she used an analogy, analogy about a Maserati and or whatever. But I didn't get where she was being so analytical. She was y'all was talking. She asked your question. Um, she did want to give you an analogy of how you know him saying that. So I didn't see the problem. I I really didn't see the problem. Now I did see where it started going left and. Stuff like that. And I would have been like that too with Portia. I would have been like, shit, you acting like you want to run a body here. Because to me, he was being dis defensive also. So like I said, we must have didn't see some shit. Because I didn't get it. Um, After that or whatever, he leaves. And I was just like with Portia. Get the fuck on. Good riddance. Because, hey, like if you can't take that conversation, what other conversation are you going to be able to take with her? This is a strong ass will girl and I just be thinking like who they matches her up with they're not compatible they can y'all please go get her a strong ass man that's gonna tell her hey sit down let me spoil you and let you be my princess but this is how it's gonna work maybe she like that I don't know but the dude that I didn't after that first date I didn't see them being together I really didn't even when they was in the elevator, I didn't see this relationship going any farther. Um, Chris introduces Amanda to Jesse. Like, like I said, we saw Jesse. She was being jealous of Amanda because he, she, she saw that Chris and Amanda was really getting along. Um, what happened after that? Darius and Judy, they were talking about being affectionate or whatever because he said he's very affectionate. She was telling him how she's not affectionate, but she would love to date somebody that's affectionate to show her, you know, how to be affectionate. So they go on the side of the building or whatever and kiss like they some damn teenagers because I'm sitting there like, why they on the side of the damn building like they hiding? But whatever. Maybe it was cute for her. Um, They show Jesse wasted his shit. <laughs> she was wasted his head. She, she was telling how, saying how she was jealous of Amanda. Um, he goes and try to talk to her. Chris goes and try to talk to her. She was talking about how she loved him, but we could tell she was drunk. He over there flirting with her and shit, and I'm sitting there like, "This not gonna end well. This not gonna end well." Um, Steve tell him that. Well, while he over there talking to Jesse. Amanda and Portia is talking and Amanda's telling her how she really likes Chris and all this kind of stuff and I was sitting there like oh shit this ain't gonna end well so then Chris Steve calls Chris to the side when he see him fighting with um, um Jesse and he tell him he needs to make a decision like in five minutes your ass gotta make a decision which one you gonna let go this fool chooses Jesse, And I'm sitting there like, you choosing Jesse because she just said she loved you, but she's drunk, stupid. And I guess he picked Jesse because he knows her. He's been more comfortable around her and stuff like that. So, I can see why he picked Jesse. But I was like, if it didn't work for you in college, it sure the hell ain't gonna work for you now. Um, so he sends Amanda, I mean, yeah, Amanda home. She hurt, she crying, look like she wanna cry, rather. And she leaves. So, after that, they have group or whatever. So, they go with Soraya first. They talk to her about Elgin. And she was talking about she's not going to never be with him. She He was like, well, promise everybody that you're not going to never be with him. And I'm like, please promise. Because that relationship ain't going to work. Just saying. Like, mm -mm, that one ain't going to work. I, I just can't see Elgin being faithful. Now, maybe he's faithful. If y'all did get back together, he's faithful all the way to this show started. But I just can't. Once the show's over... By next month, he'll be cheap. 
I'm just saying, I just don't see him being faithful. And I just feel like, why put yourself back in that same situation if he have hurt you before? You know what it feels like to be hurt by this dude. Why would you put yourself back in that situation? Um, Chris and Amanda, she was hurt. They show feedback about Chris. He don't know what the fuck he wants. And like I've been saying from episode one, this dude needs to be by himself and need to find himself and grow the fuck up. Because... He don't need to be in no relationship with anybody until he find himself. He's going to always resort back to what he knows. And that is to, if any girl show him attention, that's who he's going to show attention to. So, he's not going to be faithful neither. Um, Jesse, she basically was like, I don't want him. Like, I've been dealing with this fool for a long time, for 13 years. I know who he is. I know how he is. I don't want his ass. So, now... Chris feeling stupid and dumb and don't know where he gonna get his come from. I'm just saying. Um, Portia was in the hot seat. I don't think she should have been in the hot seat. I really think Christopher with the seat should have been in the hot seat. Really, I do. Um, only time I felt like she should have been in the hot seat when she was already up in it. Because they going back and forth. Steve feel like he's being challenged because everything that he thinks she should do, she's not doing. And... With this date, like I said, I don't understand where it went wrong. But Steve just, I think Steve just felt like he being challenged. That's why he put her in the hot seat. When she was saying, like, okay, I'm going to hurry this up. I think she was saying because I guess people was making gestures behind her. So she like, okay, let's hurry this shit up. So, whatever. But she really didn't want to hear what, um, oh boy, had Sal had to say. And he was saying she was a zero and how she was controlling and their relationship would always be an argument, which I can't understand. So move that shit on. Okay, that's how he feel. The next, just because one man feel like that about you, all men ain't going to feel like that about you. I'm just saying, like, there's somebody for everybody. I don't know who's out there for Portia, but there's somebody for everybody. She should have been like this, going to be her first boyfriend, ain't going to be her damn last. Um, I don't too, still don't too much care for Portia, I'm just saying. Um, after that, Chris was a bitch for this. Steve was a bitch for this. Steve brings out Soraya's letter that she had wrote to Chris. How Steve get this letter and made a copy of it, I don't know. But apparently, uh, Chris didn't throw it in the trash, right? He didn't rip the shit up or he just gave it to Steve. I don't know. But I just felt like this was really fucked up and this was really throwing Soraya under the bus because... If she wanted everybody to know, she would have wrote, she would have had a public service announcement. She would have had a conference. I don't know. But I feel like when somebody writes a letter to a certain person and say, dear Christopher, to Christopher, hey Christopher, that shit wasn't for everybody. So, he reads the letter on how much she likes him and how if they didn't make it to the end, matching up with nobody, then they would be together Stuff like that. No, I don't agree with that. No, I don't think that Chris and Sor Soraya should be together because I think they're on di two different pages. Um, she say he's funny. She uh, like like I said, there's things that we must don't see with them when they interaction. But regardless of what we see with them and they interaction, we still see him being a player. We still see him being childish. We still see him don't own it up to shit that he do wrong. So, that's why I say they don't be, belong together. But I just really feel like this whole letter situation and how it was brought about in front of everybody was a real fucked up situation and how they did her. Um, it was a to, to be continued, so we don't know what the interaction with them, but apparently Steve is going to set them out on a date for the season finale next week. So, we'll be able to see how that go. I hope by the end of that date, both of them realize they're better off as friends. Um, but yeah, I was not feeling Steve for, for reading that letter on Soraya. Anyway, this was my whole review for this episode of Tough Love, um, co-ed season five, episode eight. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I do everything by the ghetto view, T-H-A, not T-H-E. Um, make sure you follow Soraya on Twitter or Facebook. And you can also check her out on YouTube. It's um her Twitter is at Soraya Jones. Everything she do is um Soraya Jones. So check her out. Also check out Kyle um Keller. We didn't really get to see that much on Kyle and her date. And I don't understand why. Maybe she ain't 
so over the top and dramatic. So that's why we didn't see her. We didn't get to see Chris K. Um, date. So we didn't get to see them. So, but make sure you check out my girls, Soraya and Kyle. Um, that's all I have. Check out Mike B. 801. He also do reviews for Tough Love. Check out my girl, Ashley Miller, 1987. She just keeps it real on everything that she does. So check her out too. All right, peace.